Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, my journey took me back to the Battle of Seven Pines, May 31st, 1862. I'm working on a project of which the Battle of Seven Pines is a relatively small part, but it's an important part of the story. And my starting place was on the Confederate side, learning more about General Joe Johnston and Longstreet and how they had some troubles. There was some confusion there that was slowing down Longstreet's men as and other senior commanders on the field as they were moving into position. And so as part of my getting an understanding of that part of the battle, my investigations took me to the Union side because I needed to understand what was going on on the blue side so I could understand what was happening in greater context on the gray side. So on the blue side, I ran into the general pictured here. He's Silas Casey. And the more I learned about Mr. Silas Casey, General Silas Casey, the more I thought, gosh, I really don't know much about him and I haven't heard much about him. And yet he's a fairly consequential officer, not only during the early part of the war, but part of American history in the years leading up to the war. He's a long time, he's a career officer, a long time soldier. And so at the Battle of Seven Pines or the lead up to it, you've got Casey and his men are occupying uh, on the right flank of the Union Army. And um, he seems to be doing all the right things. He's making sure that he's got his rifle pits dug, uh, the um, other fortifications lined up. He's keeping in good communications with his superiors, and he's dispatching information to his junior officers out in the field. He's riding around, checking things out. And he's not a young man. He's a veteran soldier. And so he's, he's doing all the right moves. As I dug a little deeper, I find out that just a few months before the battle, his book comes out. It's Casey's Infantry Tactics. Now, he had had a long history dating back to, I think, 1855 with modifying tactics for the army. But his 1862 version is particularly interesting because it took a lot of the infantry tactics but it elevated the uh, use of the tactics to the brigade and the division level. Prior to the Civil War, there wasn't much call for that because the conflicts in which the United States was engaged were relatively small. But here in the Civil War, it's a much bigger situation. And so Casey's infantry tactics, with its emphasis on brigade and division, control and command is something that both sides come to value during the war. So to give you greater context, I started looking around and I found a really interesting article that is published in 1882. It's an obituary because this is the year that he dies. And in a relatively short amount of text, it gives you a sense of who he was and how he fits into our larger American story. So I want to take a moment to read to you this obituary to give you a sense of who Silas Casey was as a professional soldier. The headline alone speaks volumes. Brevet Major General Silas Casey, United States Army, death of a hero of the Mexican War and the War of the Rebellion, his notable career. Brevet Major General Silas Casey died yesterday at his residence, number 155 South Oxford Street, Brooklyn, aged 75 years. He was a native of Rhode Island, and many of the events of his active life caused the people of that state to feel proud that he was one of its sons. He received a fair school education in early life and was appointed a cadet at the United States Military Academy in June 1822. By the way, that's 40 years before the Battle of Seven Pines. 
After remaining there for four years, he was graduated in July 1826 and promoted to be brevet second lieutenant and assigned to the 7th United States Infantry. Very soon afterward, he was made second lieutenant and assigned to the 2nd Infantry. He was sent out on the frontier and served with credit at Fort Towson Indian Territory for nearly three years. In 1829-1830, imagine, out in the frontier in the 1820s and 1830, he was in the garrison at Sackett's Harbor, this state, New York, and subsequently spent a couple of years on recruiting service. A promotion to a first lieutenancy was accorded him June 28, 1836, and in 1837, he was sent with the 2nd Infantry to engage in the Florida War against the Seminole Indians. During the campaign, he was made a full captain, and in 1841-42, he was engaged in leading advance in the route of Halleck Tustanugi's band in the big hammock of Pilakaba. I'd have to look that one up. For the next four or five years, he rested quietly in garrison at Buffalo, New York, and at Fort Mackinac, Michigan. When the war with Mexico broke out, Captain Casey was ordered to the field of action and fought in all of the principal battles. In August 1847, he was breveted major for gallant and meritorious conduct in the battles of Contreras and Cherubusco. He was severely wounded in the storming of Chapultepec while leading the assaulting column under his command and was promoted to brevet lieutenant colonel for his gallant behavior on that occasion. He also received the thanks of the legislature of Rhode Island for his meritorious services in the Mexican War. After the close of the war, Colonel Casey spent two or three years on the Pacific Slope. He was on frontier duty at Benicia, California for a while. Then he commanded the escort of Captain Warner's topographical party and accompanied the expedition to Port or Orford and Coquille River. In March 1855, he was commissioned a full lieutenant colonel and was assigned to the 9th Infantry. About the same time, he was appointed a member of the Board of Officers to revise the rifle and light infantry tactics. That's the report I mentioned earlier. The report was adopted March 29, 1855. Afterward, he served on the Board of Dragoon Manual for Colt's Revolver a name that many of you are familiar with, and on the board of the examination of breech-loading arms. So he's right on the cutting edge of technology in the 50s. During the spring of 1856, he was actively engaged in operations against hostile Indians. When the War of the Rebellion broke out, Colonel Casey was ordered to Washington, where he served in organizing, disciplining, and instructing volunteers. He was promoted to the Colonel of the 4th Infantry and about the same time appointed Brigadier General of the United States Volunteers. After remaining in Washington a year, he joined the Army of the Potomac in the Virginia Peninsula campaign and was conspicuous for his bravery and good fighting qualities at the Battle of Fair Oaks, which we also know as Seven Pines. That's the Confederate name. On May 31st, 1862, he was breveted a Brigadier General of the Regular Army for meritorious conduct at Fair Oaks slash Seven Pines, and he received the thanks of the legislature of his native states for, quote, his bravery, skill, and energy at the same battle. A month or two later, he was made Major General of Volunteers and placed in command of the troops at the White House and also of the provisional grade in Washington. In 1863, he was appointed president of the Board of Examination of Candidates for Officers of Colored Troops. He was mustered out of the volunteer service in August 1865, and during the same year was made a brevet major general of the United States Army for gallant and meritorious services during the rebellion. After the war closed, he was placed in command of the troops at Fort Wayne and Detroit, Michigan. In 1867, he served as commissioner to examine the war claims of Ohio. He subsequently sat with two or three courts of inquiry 
and was a member of the retiring board in this city from October 28th, 1868 until April 26th, 1869. General Casey retired from active service July 8th, 1868 on his own application after 40 consecutive years of service. Aside from his military exploits, he contributed two or three valuable works to the military literature of the country. He compiled and edited a system of infantry tactics. That's the one I talked about earlier. Uh, he also published a book on infantry tactics for colored troops, which was adopted March 9, 1863. The funeral services will take place tomorrow afternoon in the Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church, Brooklyn. His remains will be taken to Rhode Island for interment. So there's the career of the man pictured here, Silas Casey, General, United States Army. A lot of contributions, particularly to infantry tactics on the brigade and division level, helping to probably in the long run save lives and help senior commanders, both his peers and those above him, to be able to handle themselves better in the various operations and campaigns and battles in which they found themselves. And a final note on Seven Pines. After the battle, which was inconclusive, but sort of leaned a little bit against the Union Army, Folks were looking for a scapegoat, and some finger pointing was coming in Silas Casey's way. According to my reading, a number of his peers and those in the ranks below him spoke up, wrote letters of praise, expressing shock that he would even be accused of any wrongdoing. Long story short, none of none of the accusations stuck to him, and that general's promotion that I mentioned, that I read in the obituary, it came to him as a result of his service at the Battle of Seven Pines. So there you have it, the Silas Casey story. Until the next time, we'll see you on the trail. <laughs>